Hello friends and welcome back. In this lecture, we will write a program and use our client class. And here is the program. First of all, I want you to create an array of two clients. Then I want you to add two accounts for the first client and three accounts for the second one. And finally, we will print the information of each client using the toString method. So pause the video and implement this program. Now let's go to IntelliJ. So let's start by creating an array of two clients. So the type is a client and it is an array. Let's call it clients and let's instantiate it. So new client array of two clients. Now both the clients are null, right? So let's instantiate the first and second elements. So clients sub zero is equal to a new client. And over here, we need to pass the ID, the name and the phone. Let's suppose that the ID of the first client is 100. His name is Ali and his phone is the following. Just a random phone number, right? Now we want to instantiate the second client. So client sub one, like this, is equal to a new client. Suppose that the ID is 200. Let's say his name is Sujit, like this. And let's add another random phone number. All right. Now we have our two clients instantiated. Let's add some accounts to the first client. So client sub zero, this is the first client. And we want to use the add account method. As you can see, this method takes an account and it returns a Boolean. So let's pass a new account to this method. And the account class is the one that we created previously. So we need to pass an ID, balance, and annual interest rate. Now all this information is going to be random, all right? Suppose that the ID is equal to one, the balance is 1000, and the annual interest rate is 1.5. Now let's add one more account to this client. So let's say the annual interest rate is 2.5, the balance is 2000, and the ID is two. Now let's add some accounts to the second client. So client sub one, this is the second client, and we'll use the add account method. Over here, we will instantiate a new account. The ID is going to be three. The balance is 3000 and the annual interest rate is 3.5. And this over here should be 3000 like this. Let's add another account, 4.5, 4,000 and four. And the final account, the ID is five, 5,000 and 5.5. Of course, all this information are random. Now to organize this code a little bit better, I'm going to add all these accounts for the first client when we create it. So over here. So as you can see, we create the first client and immediately we add the accounts, right? And over here, we create the second client and we add his accounts. Now at the end, let's print the information about each client using the toString method. So I'm going to print client sub zero dot toString like this. And the same goes for the second client. Now, before I run the program, pause the video and try to expect what will be the output. All right, so let's run the program and here's the output. So first of all, we are printing the first client using the toString method. So I'm going to press Ctrl and press on the toString and we'll go to the definition of this method, right? So let's see. First of all, we printed the ID of the first client, then the name, and finally the phone number. As you see, we did this over here. And after that, we concatenated backslash n. As I said before, the backslash n breaks to a new line. So after we finish printing the phone, we will get to a new line. So now we are over here. Now in this method, we are iterating over all the accounts and concatenating them to the string S. So as you can see over here, this account was concatenated to the string and then we concatenated backslash N, as you see over here. So after we concatenate the first account, we will get to a new line. And after that, we will concatenate the second account. And as you can see over here, we have the second account. Perfect. Now let me remind you that this string over here, we are getting it from the toString method of the account class. So I'm going to press Ctrl and press on toString and here is the implementation of the toString method of the account class. As you see, for each account, first of all, we print the ID, followed by the balance, then the annual interest rate, and then the date created. Now let's go back to our main program. And as you can see over here, we finished printing the first client. And of course, after printing the second account, we will get to a new line because we concatenated backslash n. So we will be over here. And after that, the println method is going to get us to a new line because we are using println, not print. So now we are over here. And now we are going to print the second client and the same thing happens. This is our client and these are all the accounts for this client. Perfect. Now have a look over here. I'm going to remove the call for the toString method over here and over here. And now I'm going to run the program again. Have a look over here. We still have the same output. So let me tell you this. Each object has a toString method and this method returns the string representation of this object. So whenever we try to print an object, Java will automatically call the toString method of this object. For example, over here, we are printing the first client, right? Which is an object. So Java will get the string representation of the client object using the toString method. 
And as we saw previously, we implemented this method over here. So when Java sees that we implemented the toString method, it will call this method over here. But what if we didn't implement this method? So let me remove this method, and now we don't have a toString method in the client class. So let's return to the main class, and I will run the program again. Now have a look over here. This is the string representation of the first client, and this is the string representation of the second client. Now we might ask, where is this string representation coming from? As I said, the string representation comes from the toString method. But as you see, we didn't implement the toString method. So actually, there is a toString method that is already implemented somewhere else. And if we don't implement our own toString method, Java will automatically call the other toString method. But if we implement our own toString method, then Java is going to call this toString method. Okay? So now, if we run the program, you will see that we have the same output as before. Now you might ask, where is the other toString method implemented? This will be a topic for another time. Now I want to make one more change inside the client class, inside the toString method. As you see over here, we are concatenating the string representation of the account object with backslash n and with a string s. And to do that, we are calling the toString method, right? So let's remove it. Now Java will see that we are trying to concatenate an object with a string. So Java will automatically get the string representation of this object. And it will do the same thing. It is going to call the toString method. And as you know, inside the account class, we implemented this method over here. So Java will get the string representation of this object by calling the toString method that we implemented. So let's run the program again. And as you can see, we have the same output. But what if we remove the toString method from over here? So I'm going to remove it and now run the program again. And now you will see that this is the string representation for an account object. So now Java is calling the toString method that is implemented somewhere else. Now let's get the toString method back. And there is one more thing I want to show you. Let's change the code over here. I'm going to remove it and I'm going to concatenate to the variable as our array list accounts. So what's going to happen over here? Java will see that we are concatenating an object with a string, which is the string s. So it's going to get the two string representation of this object, which is an array list. So we will have something like this. We will have some brackets and inside the brackets, we will have some elements, right? So Java is going to get the string representation of each element inside the array list. And as you know, this array list over here is an array list of accounts. So Java is going to call the toString method of the account object to get the string representation. So for each account in the array list, Java will get the string representation from the toString method over here. And finally, when we get the string representation of our array list, we will concatenate it with S. And this will be on a new line. Because over here, we concatenated backslash N. So after getting to a new line, we will concatenate the string representation of this array to the variable S. So now let's run the program and now this is our output. This is the first client and this client has an array list of accounts. He has two accounts, right? As you see, this is the first account and over here, this is the second account. And we are getting the string representation of each account using the toString method of the account. So for example, let me go to the account class and remove the toString method. Now let's run the program. And now this is the string representation of the accounts array list and inside it, this is the string representation of the first account and this is the string representation of the second account. So I hope that you find this interesting. So I hope that you see the benefit of a toString method. Later on, we will talk about this in details and we will understand how everything works under the hood. So let's run the program one more time and this is our output. And this is it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.